So my role in this talk, incidentally, is actually really just to give a very brief introduction and introduce the two people who've been really working on the topic from a kernel point of view, uh, who are Ira and Navni. Ho hopefully, we've got them both online. Hey, Justin. Hey, and Ira's just been speaking, Hello, so we're, we're good to go. Okay, so the agenda for this particular talk is pretty straightforward. We're going to have an introduction, which I'll get through nice and quickly. Uh, then we're going to move on to some questions around asynchronous add and release of memory. Partial extents have raised some uh, corner cases. Um, interleaving, always a challenge. Uh, forced release was asked earlier about chemu side of things. Um, this is obviously what do we do about it from a kernel side of things. Uh, yeah, some stuff on interactions as well. Yeah, apparently we're not going to crash. Um, that's what they're saying in the room. <laughs> yeah. Option one, crash. Um, so what are we actually after in this talk? We, first of all, want to highlight some of the challenges that have been brought via the dynamic capacity um, feature. Uh, we want to identify some use cases, because some of these questions are driven by what people actually want to do with it. And while those of us involved can conjecture wildly, we obviously represent only a small corner of the industry, and people may have other use cases. Um, Yep, and then the aim really is to get lots and lots of discussion going. So this slide can be covered really, really quickly because, frankly, we already had an introduction to what DCD was. Uh, but just to recap for anyone who's joined since the first session, um, it's a 6L3 feature allowing memory to be changed dynamically without any need to do substantial host system changes. I mean, personally, I don't think you need to restart to run without DCD, but it depends on exactly what you implemented to whether you do or not. Um, the device can have up to eight regions. Uh, they can have different parameters and different settings. Uh, it's all about adding and releasing of extents. An extent is, is a complex word for a base address and a length. That's all it is. Easy way of representing a chunk of memory. Um, the device has to maintain lists per host. Uh, as it says here, the fabric manager triggers the add and release operations. and. Hopefully, I've got a bar over the bottom one. Oh, yes, and we will come on later to the fact that from a host side of things, it's presented as DAX. And without further ado, I'm going to hand over to my co-speakers. Hi. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Navneet. Uh, I'm working with Intel. Uh, I'm going to cover some of the challenges for what we are facing uh, in implementing the advanced DCT features. So one of them is uh, asynchronous DC uh, memory release. So uh, if there's a uh, DC memory release request initiated by the fabric manager, which will go to the uh, CXL device. And uh, if that memory is pinned in the host, uh, uh, whether it's a user pin memory or the kernel pin memory, right? So uh, that memory can't be released immediately. But uh, CXL 3.0 specification uh, allows to asynchronously release the memory. Right. So, uh, what is user pin memory? If uh, some, if if the complete extent or some part of the extent, uh, the host is not able to release the memory, then it is in use. And uh, once memory is free, then it should be written back to the device asynchronously. And uh, whether a device is uh, whether the host is using this memory or not, that is uh, that is based on the uh, use of the device text mapping. Right. On the kernel pin memory side, if some of the kernel components or uh, or the device driver has uh, mapped this memory, then uh, this memory can't be released back to the uh, device, right? And uh, this map, uh, once this mapping is done, is released, then this memory should be released back to the CXL device, and which is very unlikely to happen. Uh, can you help to go to uh, next slide, please? <coughs> Okay. Hang on. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. So, uh, pre first, uh, pre first line, pre first, pre -first line. Pre yep. Yeah. So about this asynchronized like uh, release. So if the release is triggered by an event, so this means we will not send a response to the device until the extent is really released, right? Will this block the all the event in the 
a process in the event log on the device? So uh, CXL 3.0 allows, uh, is, there's an option whether to give the uh, response back to the device with the zero extent or uh, it, uh, a host can avoid uh, sending the response back to the uh, to the device. Yeah. So in short, you've, you've got to so, respond so reasonably quickly, but you don't necessarily have to release the memory, but you can release it later anyway. So you can so take the thing off the event log. So basically, we can respond with zero extents. And later, we just uh, respond, uh, just release it when we don't need to yeah. use it. it we will have lost the information to know that the device asked for it back should the host crash. Um, but that's not critical anyway. You can always ask again. OK. okay. Sorry, Ari, you were saying? Right. I was just going to say that. The, the event is processed. And then if the, if the memory is in use, the actual release response is, is sent once the memory is not used anymore. So, okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, the, the, uh, the one thing I was going to say about that is, though, something was already in in the contract to get get the memory assigned to the host in the first place. That whatever that communication path is can also make sure that the memory is offline before the before the FM sends the event. Like, I, I feel like I, I feel like by the time the event comes in, it, that's too late. Like, some in order to keep the kernel. The simplest is the kernel just says no. If if you haven't offlined it and it comes in, just say no. Um, we're not going to play these games of partially releasing things and, and walking page like tables and and so it, just trying to put that out there like hey, please don't build your FM with this idea that you can just ask the kernel to give things back because the kernel just might say no to everything. I'll, I'll add that was one of the things we wanted industry feedback on. Yeah. Um, if there are reasons for this, and I agree with Dan, we couldn't think of any. Right. Um, but if there are, it is something that can be supported and patches are always welcome. Well, but Dan, you also mentioned partial extents, which we're on that slide now, which is a little bit different than asking for the whole. The, Jonathan, you said it very well that extent is a very overloaded term because there's there's the memory range that was originally given to the host, and then there's the potential of a sub extent or a, or a sub range of that being asked back. And there's going to be, you know, based on our discussion on Discord. Um, and fan agree that we're going to simplify this, and none of this, none of this sub extent game is going to get played right away. And if if that needs to be played, then it's going to make things much more complicated, and we need a strong use case for it. So anyway, go ahead, Navneen. I didn't I didn't mean to steal this, but this this is this slide is timely. Okay, so. Uh... Also, CXL 3.0 spec allows to, uh, uh, you know, uh, use the uh, partial extents. It means that uh, our extent can be divided into sub extent, and uh, it can be uh, uh, partial extent can be released back to the device, or uh, you know, uh, uh, device can uh, accept some part of extent. Right. So let's say if somebody has asked for uh, x amount of uh, uh, memory, but uh, a host can uh, select or you know accept some part of that uh, memory that uh, you know it's allowed to do that but uh, as of now we are looking for any strong use case in linux and uh, if there's one then uh, that will help us to support this implementation uh, next slide please uh, next comes uh, the dcd on, interleaving sorry. challenges oh, hang on a second no, good question uh, just more, yeah, just trying to understand the problem there. So if, so I don't know if this is a real use case yet, but let's say a device recognizes some issue within a sub-region of an extent, and it wants to do some sort of maintenance on it. Would that be a good use case for it to re request back just that piece from the host, do some sort of repair, and allow it back? It may not be an urgent thing, because that would probably be covered with more urgent events, but... Does that make sense? Maybe it's something that might come. So. Yeah, that's potentially. That, that, would, that would, but would it be better for somebody to flag that and have the, you know, the the host software that's that's using the memory also flag that through the FM and tear tear down the usage of that of that yeah. memory, right? Right. Be because right now, I think 
the idea is that any extent that's handed to the host that you're going to have a user space app mapping that entire extent that, that, that we're not going to map huge extents that aren't going to be used just in case we want to take some back and so if there's any anybody on the host has that mapped then the kernel has to assume it's being used whether it's actually being used or not i flex that a little bit um we haven't got far yet into the virtualization use cases but just because it's a nice big memory mapped file in the host doesn't mean that we don't have visibility of how it's mapped up into a VM. So there could be a layer of translation. Well, we may, we may have the visibility, but, well, okay, sure. Yes. I mean, in that case, the kernels cannot, you're right, the kernel can react without any assumptions, but still it's anticipated that that's going to be used or, is, or is, whoever asked for it probably wants to use it. We kind of have crossed this bridge a little bit with, with PMEM where with the DAX device you can map it in, in, in gigabyte mappings and it will never be broken up. And so if you get, if you get one, one cache line within your one gig is gone, the entire, the entire one gig is gone. And, and, and I mean, that's easiest because like we keep everything together. And, but if we need to talk about splitting, we can. Like, uh, like a lot of these things are on the table. It's just kind of waiting for that one end user that's like, I really need that. I'm like, okay. Um, but until then, we're like, no, let's, let's right. keep it simple. Hmm. So on to something simple. Next slide. <laughs> okay. Uh, shall I move on to next slide? On the DCT interleaving challenges? Yep. Okay. So uh, the major challenge here is with the CXM memory device uh, driver that, uh, you know, extents are coming from multiple uh, CXL devices which are participating in the interleaving, right? And uh, the CXL memory device driver has to uh, keep track of all the extents and when all the extents are, uh, uh, you know, received, uh, in that case, uh, it has to compose, uh, it has to translate all the DPAs to the HPA and compose a HPA range and then uh, pass on that extent to the user space, right? So uh, in case of the uh, extent add, once the interleaving set is complete after receiving the last extent uh, from the interleaving memory device, then its device driver will construct the HPA range and it will surface the extent to the user space. And in case of the extent remove the very first release extent, which we re uh, uh, receive one of the uh, CXL device, which is uh, part of that interleaving set, that will lead to removal of the interleaving memory that complete memory range will be removed from the uh, from the host uh, cxl 3.0 also uh, allows to uh, forcefully remove the uh, dynamic capacity uh, uh, memory uh, in this case uh, if memory is pinned for very long time then a device can raise a forced dynamic capacity release request and uh, it will not wait for the host to respond back, but it will simply remove that memory uh, from the host, right? And in that case, if any access uh, uh, happens from the host side, then uh, the kernel will lead to the poison, or it may crash, right? So uh, there's a force ignored by the Linux software, like uh, dev error rate limit, we can limit the error logs, so that extent is leaked and probably we will require the host to reboot to come out of this situation. Questions coming in? So th this sounds like a very similar use case to like the error isolation, memory error isolation. So, I mean, as these kind of problems are solved and they're overlapping with some other things, I mean, are they being taken into account or are they being treated like very independent features? Yeah, I, I, I have, you, you, you raised memory, memory, error, memory error isolation, that's in 3.0. Uh, th my concern with that is that you really need to have a kind of co a contrived setup where memory cannot be online for memory error isolation because you need to be able to take the entire, you need to be able to reliably take, reliably and safely take the memory offline, all of it. Um, DAX, can, DAX can do that because it's filed back so you can go shoot down, everybody has a, a inode map. There's no good way to go shoot down everybody that has online memory map. So I don't I don't see how error isolation can work if the memory is online. And if it's offline, yeah, then we, then we can we can force remove all day. But online memory, you can't like 
once you online it, you're basically opting into not ever being able to get it back for any reason. Keep going. Yeah, we can go. <laughs> well, yeah. So, so one subtlety here, which is what I implemented the first go round, is that force actually would allow the extent to be removed if it wasn't in use. Are we saying that that is a potential use case? If it's not actually mapped anywhere, I agree with Dan. If it's mapped somewhere, that's that's a different. That that's more like the memory error out of isolation. But if if the if the memory is not actually in use, should we go ahead and allow the you know should we recover the extent and not leak it? My understanding is, is the hardware is not waiting for us. Like the like the the replacement. No. The, the, the force removal uh, is for, or like, removal of last, like, the expectation is the kernel's already crashed at that point. Like, all your other communication, communication mechanisms that release the memory have failed. The kernel's probably dead at that point. So the, the kernel ever receiving a removal event in a, in a state where it can, it can process it, I, I think, is zero or, or low. Yeah. Anything we do here is going to be best effort. Maybe if someone has a use case, yeah, it's like till it, then. It's, it's 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 the, it's the what, what what color do you want the yeah. battleship to go be as as it's sinking kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and uh, force dynamic capacity uh, uh, will. One 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 comment regarding the the forceful. Um, I don't think that that would be the case for like a CXL reset, where you do have to like wait. Um, If, if you're issuing that to a Type 3 device, something's gone horribly wrong. Yeah, if you're, if you're issuing CXL reset, you'd, I would have hoped you've already offline the memory before you tried to do well, it. Well, yeah, it, it has to be offline. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if, if you're live enough to offline, offline the memory, then you'll, you won't get the force anyway because you'll be responding to whatever. Like, the front, you can, you can walk in the front door. You don't need, you don't need to, break, to kick down the back door. Okay, I think we're good to carry on. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, over to Ira for, uh, uh, for the sparse text region. Yeah, so um, this slide, I'm really just trying to go over where traditional DAX regions are, are, are without DCD. And um, DAX regions are created they're created on existing memory. These DAX devices are created linearly. They can map different ranges within that, but there's very limited control over where those DAX ranges are. And I wanted to kind of throw this slide up with a little picture to kind of say where we're at, such that my next slide where I'm talking about DCD, we can start to talk a little bit more. Yeah, you going to the next slide? There we go. So with, with this, the the current idea is that the the dax region becomes a container so we're we're introducing this new concept within the kernel and this kind of feeds into how user space may use the the dcd memory ranges and we're we're introducing a sparks dax region where the dax region is created but there's no actual memory available inside of it and then the dax devices Right now, as a first cut, I'm still using a linear creation of them. So as you create DAX devices, they can use parts of each extent and they can be packed into extents and they'll jump over any gaps in the region and to fill into the extents. So the, the, the picture here is showing an initial DAX dev on the left that's creating a DAX range that, that maps part of a region extent and then uh, supposedly, something's come along, created a DAX device that created a another DAX range that filled up that first DAX region extent, and then the second DAX device that's actually existing right now, and I apologize for the photo because this first DAX device should have been a little smaller to the left, but, um, but now the second DAX device comes along and it actually fills up the second extent and it extends into a third extent. And then that device goes, that other device goes away, and this third DAX device comes online and it fills into the, to the, the third region extent. So you can see that we have three DAX devices here, but they're mapped differently into the various extents. 
even with some with with a gap in the region itself between extents where they showed up as well as a gap in the first region extent that's being unused and would potentially be filled in by a by a subsequent DAX device being created. Um, and the reason that I wanted to go through this is that one of the ideas that we were floating around and was actually in the last patch set that went up that, that I submitted as an RFC was the idea that tags could be used for DAX devices to be created on specific regions that had specific tags. And so, you know, one of the things I wanted to bring up with this slide is, is that a decent use case? I know tags were specifically created for shared memory, um, but those tags could be, you know, bec because the tags are, are not specified directly for shared memory only, they could be used for various things. So if an FM wanted to create specific extents for with specific tags, um, you know, maybe that's where we want to go. I don't think that the next patch set is going to try to attempt to do anything. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove all labels or tags um, from from the patch set because. But I think that going forward over the next year, I wanted to bring this up as a use case. Where do we want to go as far as how does the user get access into the extents that are surfaced to the region? So I have a comment about that. Uh, the uh, so tags are going to be essential for sharing. Um, and if the memory was to try to change behind a tag, that breaks sharing. Um, so surfacing shareable memory under tags is essential. I'll add one other thing, I, I, which is Dan was shaking his head, and he's right on this one, which is that tags actually weren't introduced for sharing. They were introduced for labeling for the purposes of applications. And sharing was a convenient reuse of some infrastructure. Fair enough, yeah. Oh, okay. I did not I did not know that. Okay. Well then but but then but then the use case that we're discussing here is 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 appropriate then. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Each extent. So so should I have labels at least um, uh, shown in SysFS for now? Or I mean how far because it's not too far to go to be able to create a DAX device on a particular region with a particular label. It, it's, it's not very difficult to extend the patch set to that. But I was going to try to avoid that in the next release to try to get something landed upstream before we go that far. Yeah, I mean, just as you're talking about it, it, it feels like something we want to enumerate. I don't think we need to have a dynamic allocation policy around it. Just be like, hey, Here's the capacity with this tag available. You can do with it as you wish, but otherwise you don't need to relabel it or retag it. We, we yeah. might add some sanity checking because there are some rules about tags turning up later, although they only really apply to shared. So for normal capacity, you can, you can add more capacity with the same tag at any time. Yeah. Um, whether we need to enable that, yeah. and, and does I'll, it matter? And also for shared, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think shared should any, could, touch any of this. Like, I feel like shared needs its own ABI. It's a different, it's a whole different security model and uses model. Yep. So, okay, but if we, if we, if we export the tags for the extents, but we don't add any support, the DAX device, how will the DAX devices be created onto the particular extents? Like, would you mean? Would you at least be able to see the address ranges? Yeah, yeah. We 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 we, we talk about it because because I I think I think people are are going to want to be able to to have a use case where they can at least make sure that one device is bound by one tag domain and be able to and and have a contract that says, oh, I I can I I want to add and release or I I want I want this uh, container or whatever to use memory from this device by tag. Right. So, so having, so having, the, again, extend the the DAX interface to be able to to assign a tag to it, such that it would take memory from particular extents that are tagged that way. But I feel like I mean, like already today, like the there's already user space code that looks at the address space and knows how to do a complicated allocation policy to get 
to get the DAX device on the specific ranges they want. So they could start with that. Like we don't, we don't need to solve that problem for them. It, like if, if that becomes too kludgy, then we can talk about like how to do this dynamically. But I think as long as you can see, I need this HPA range for this tag, then you can then you can you can approximate the rest with user space logic. Uh, but that's uh, how about yeah, yeah? So how about uh, synchronizing it with the uh, with the user agent? Let's say uh, some of the workload which is running on the host can say that uh, give me the memory associated with this tag. And once that uh, memory is surfaced on the host, and it can see that that tag is associated with this, so workload can start using that memory spe specifically for the elasticity case, right? So that it can use that memory, uh, and once it is done, it can release it back. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, th th this is where we kind of need like the orchestrator people and the device people to kind of show up and say like, yeah, this is what we want to build together. Because right now, I, th I feel like we're in this talking about what we po could possibly do without really knowing what people actually want to do in practice. Can we, I mean, as I understand it, can we push the whole thing to be a user space problem from the point of view of doing the matching of the address ranges? Yeah, yeah, like, 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 like right now, uh, like Oracle added, way back in the day, or a year, couple mm -hmm. years ago, added, added this ability to look at the memory map and, and do the custom allocation. They, and, and people have done things like, oh, let, let's, let's solve the noisy neighbor problem in user space, and, and they just, it's 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 an ugly bash script to to toggle the DAX APIs, but you can you can get there. Okay, so someone else's problem. Someone we, we can we can say someone else's problem until somebody screams. I think. Okay, but we at least need the tags for the extent surface so that people know which tags are. I think yeah, the bare minimum. Yeah, we, we need to be able yeah. to enumerate, enumerate that. Yeah. yeah. And we and we probably need to have, have more information. We need to have the extent. Uh, uh, starting DPA as well, the offset, so that they can figure that out because that's not surfaced yet. Yeah, it, it is indirectly, but it, but it's, but it's, it needs to be explicit, I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Moving on. Yeah. So, uh, just in review, we've got you know the kernel, the RFC v3 is coming soon. Based on the recent discussions on Discord, I'm going to have to re uh, do the patch set a little bit. Um, not that anything is particularly hard with creating regions before accepting extents, but the patch set itself was was built up in a different order. So in order to get the patch set clean, it's going to have to be reworked. Um, so. Look, look for that coming soon. Uh, Fan, I believe you've got, uh, actually, I think this is your late, latest posting. I'm not sure. Fan is nodding. The, the Git tree is a bit dated. A <laughs> yeah, the, the top one's the latest. The Git tree needs an update. OK. Your tree. Yeah, it, it's a couple of weeks behind. OK. I'll, I'll do that after the conference. So. Well, so pay attention to the mailing list and Discord. So. Uh, uh, Discord has been mentioned a few times on this uh, in this in session. It, this, this Discord is is by word of mouth. Uh, so, but if, if anybody's currently a member of it, feel free to share an invite link to it. Or if if you're not on it and you want to get this, uh, talk, contact me or anybody else on it. Yeah, feel free to share the link. I just feel like I just feel like by word of mouth keeps keeps some of the. Uh, uh, yeah, keep, keeps it sane. So, yeah, but 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 it's, it's not uh, it's, it's 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 not a secret club. Anybody? But it is. Yeah. But it is. But it is. But, but and it's not sane. Yeah, but if you're at Plumbers, then you're you're part you're part of the cool kids. <laughs> cool. So we've got maybe three minutes, two minutes left. Any more questions on this topic? Looks like we can go to coffee early. Okay. Thanks all. All right, thank you. Thank you.